talking about the, the 73 war, but you were the, maybe the first time you met Yoni, what your feelings were for him, and uh, how how uh, those feelings grew, how your relationship grew with him. Yoni I knew since my early childhood, because he's just one, exactly one year younger than me, and we started in the same high school, the gymnasium, Javier, and uh, the intimate friendship was uh, created when we were already in officers in the army. I commanded a battalion in the Golan Heights. Yoni was the deputy commander of the special forces of the Air And uh, in the winter of 1972, we really came to know each other very well, a year before the war. Due to some activities that they did in the Golan, they wanted to be guests and to use my base as their exit point. And uh, in 72, we really harnessed a very close friendship. We knew each other very well. And uh, I was very happy that uh, during the war, Yom Kippur War, the first week, when I regrouped the remains of the Bahar Brigade, uh, Yoni was given with his subunit as a reinforcement to my battalion. And with that uh, battalion, we group battalion, we went to the counter defense operation on Thursday, October 11th, and during the night of October 11th, it was Yoni who came to reinforce me in my night lager and help to uh, prepare the tanks for the next day, and also gave me, uh, by miracle, a small radio set that was part of saving my life. And then the next day, on Friday, October 12, in the afternoon, when I failed to capture Tel Shams, but I was already on the hill, on that very fortified Syrian hill, um, and I was blown out of my tank by anti-tank missile, found myself on the ground. So later, six hours later, it was Yoni who came to rescue me, and if he didn't, if he wouldn't do so, I would never be able to come every year to his grave and you guys would come to my grave. Can I ask you to, to just tell me that same story again, a little story with a little more detail, how you found yourself in that situation and as the time passed. Can you just elaborate on a little more? It's a spectacular story. It's a legendary story. I don't like to elaborate more stories in any more detail. The only distinct details that should be remembered, few, few pay their life and don't come back, and the many that come back owe their life to them. And all the details are meaningless to my mind. And uh, it so happened that, thank God and Yoni, I'm here to say that three years later, when we lost him, in Antebbe in 76, we lost one of the most significant heroes of our country, and he died when he was 30 years old. And I'm convinced that if we were together in the army, you know, all through the years, from 76 when he was killed, until today, I would be probably under his command because he would be climbing up and be one of the most significant leaders of the IDF. Unfortunately, he was killed in Antebbe on the 4th of July in the night time. And since then, I do my utmost to remember him and to make people remember him and the tradition that evolved from his and his friends' heroism. So, you know, I'm very involved in trying to erect in Antebbe a memorial for that operation and to Yoni. And since I'm in charge of the defense export, I take opportunity and go to Kampala every once in a while and do my best to keep in that place a vivid memory for a special operation because it doesn't an operation of the Israelis against the Arabs. It's an operation of free countries against terrorism. And um, you know that uh, the aircraft that was taken to Entebbe was a French aircraft. 
It was not an Israeli aircraft. And it was a responsibility of the French government to rescue people from a French airport. But it was the leadership of this country at that time. Mr. Rabin, Mr. Rabin, as Prime Minister, Mr. Peres as the Defense Minister, Motagur as the Chief of Staff, and they took a blunt decision to try and do it. And the special unit went there, and you met Pinchas Buchrist, he's now my director. <coughs> And they did it, and they got all the hostages back, but four of them. And one person did not come back alive, only his body rests here. So every year comes the Memorial Day. Today I came with my daughter Yoni. She was named after him. And uh, she's doing her utmost to stand to the name we gave her. She's an operation officer in the part of her. She's already a career officer so to speak. Not a great career, but, you know, um, that's it. Two good questions. When, without elaborating further, but when you were trapped and you were injured and uh, you were waiting for rescue and you saw that it was your friend who was coming to rescue, what was the thought that came into your mind? What was the sensation? It was two things were happening. You were being rescued and you were being rescued by Yoni. Andrew, if you talk with, talk with soldiers, fighters, you have to remember they cannot build the story after the story. I was not part of the story, really, from the moment I got this anti-tank missile. If I could tell you all the details, it means I learned them from other people, because I was there on the ground, and my driver, Tzvika, pulled me to a Syrian trench, and he saved me first. And what happened? I just learned through the years. You talk to Janusz, commander of the 7th Brigade, you talk to people that came with uh, uh, Yoni, and they will tell you what really happened, and I will be happy to learn more and more about the details of that day. Good point. Well taken. Yoni, do you have something you'd like to say about the fact that you wear this badge of honor, you have the name of this most special person? Just to be Excellent. Thank you very much.